Super excited to have you on the show. Uh, obviously, you are with Amazon Lit. Uh, I We've had tons of e-commerce sellers on the show. You are one of the first that we could probably comfortably say is uh, very well known in the space. Mm -hmm. You're all over the place, tens of thousands of Instagram followers, all focused on Amazon. You have a, thousands of YouTube, like you're, you're all over the place. So we can comfortably say you're a bit of an influencer in the Amazon space. Uh, I would love to obviously give you a minute here, tell everyone a little bit about your background, how you got where you are, uh, and then we'll we'll dive into uh, all that Amazon drama. It's always fun to talk about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, my name's Eric Castellano. I've been selling on Amazon for about a decade now. We started in 2013. And in the beginning, it was the way most people started, you know, I was doing retail arbitrage and online arbitrage and just kind of flipping these products. And I realized immediately that it's a lot of work in order to scale a business that way. So we, we kind of looked for a space we could get into that would allow for more growth. And that space happened to be Amazon Wholesale. Um, so when we started doing Amazon Wholesale, we just took it and run with it. Um, mm -hmm. At the time, I was uh, in college, construction, uh, management I was studying to be and you know I was working part-time jobs building homes and decks and doing renovations on people's homes and I love that type of stuff I still do a lot of it today but it wasn't it just wasn't generating the money I needed to make so I, I went all in on Amazon you know I stopped everything else and just fully focused on Amazon so was there any type of specific product line you stuck to or was it more of the product research what's selling what's doing well and then just sourcing that and, and moving on from there yeah so initially it was anything we could find at the big club stores like costco bj sam's club anything yeah. that we could find either coupon or discounted or at a reasonable price where you could make some money so mainly you know beauty health products and grocery which are still the categories we stick to today yeah. So primarily those A are very competitive spaces. Yeah. Uh, and with the approach that you're taking, if you're you're going to big box stores and basically just reselling it from there, that margin's not massive. So no. are you you it's obviously a volume game. So what's yeah. what's some of your secrets? What's what's the approach that you typically take? Because obviously I know we'll get into the fact that you have Amazon lit, you have an entire aspect of your business now where you're showing sellers or people yeah. who want to be Amazon sellers how to do this. So I'm positive that you've narrowed this down to a pretty solid process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So early on, you're, you're absolutely right, Andrew. Early on, our margins were very low because we were doing those club store purchases and retail store purchases. And we found that when we made the transition to wholesale, we were able to build relationships with these companies and capitalize on getting huge discounts, sometimes up to 25% off of wholesale pricing. So now we're even getting it cheaper than the retail store selling it, less 25% on some of them. So it creates a lot of opportunities. So it's really for us, what, what allowed us to scale was the relationships with the distributors that we do business with. It's all about the relationships because yeah. if you have the relationship, they're gonna give you a better price and they're gonna give you the next person. Yeah. So is your tactics in terms of getting product out there, starting to sell, and is it heavily on the on the advertising side, I assume? Uh, no, no, we don't do, we spend very minimal on advertising. We spend about $10,000 a month at about a 5% A cost. Uh, so our goal is just finding products that people trust already, like Revlon, Head & Shoulders, Old Spice, Mitchum Deodorant, you know, people, products that people have been using for decades. They don't need to see an ad. They're going to buy it already. Yeah. So you're basically catering off of, or I should say you're leveraging pre-existing brand awareness and yes. just kind of going after that. So the advertising side really is kind of pointless because you're going to show up organically pretty high up there regardless. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's definitely some SKUs that we got to pump some advertising spend into, but I'm comfortable yeah. doing that because the rest of the business pretty much sells itself. Yeah. So what made you, uh, I don't want to say pivot, but what made you kind of expand into Amazon Lit and starting to show people your secrets? 
Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It definitely wasn't a pivot. I think it was more, well, I guess it was a pivot, right? But I, we still operate, you know, a massive Amazon business. So really what happened was it was 2018. I was in this office with my business partner, Sebastian, and I saw my first course FBA course ad ever that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I got so excited and I bought it immediately. It was $3,000. I'm not going to say who it was from. Um, but I was just so excited that other people were talking about this because at the time there was no Instagram fake. Nobody talked about FBA, you know, six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, so I bought it and within about five minutes of watching it, I found like five or six things that were completely inaccurate. And I was very disappointed. You know, I was very disappointed and, and I and that night Sebastian and I we looked at each other and we said we're gonna build the world's best Amazon FBA program and push it out to the community and we're like, what are we gonna call it? And we threw some names around and came up with Amazon Lit and it's been like that ever since. So what uh the concept of taking courses and going that whole approach and convincing people to sign up for them. It, there's so many people out there that do stuff like this now. And obviously you've done a fantastic job at standing out from everyone else because you can tell by the following you have and the results that you've been able to drive. But even from the course alone that you started to develop, what is it that you did that's kind of showcasing like, here's why all those other courses are more or less BS and, and you wanna you wanna check out ours? Yeah, well, I, I really think the proof of concept, you know, it's not just like, it's not like I used to sell on Amazon or one time in my life I sold on Amazon. Yeah. Like I, I still today operate one of the largest wholesale Amazon businesses in the world. You know, we're top 50 Amazon sellers. So like that proof alone says a lot, but I think what really separates us is we provide weekly coaching with our group that me and myself and Sebastian are on every single call, you know? So you're not just getting a course and saying, here, figure this out. You're getting guided through the course and guided through the program by Amazon professionals. So it's completely different than what most people are offering. So so let's let's kind of get into, into a little bit of opinionated stuff here. Yeah, so, please. <laughs> so there there's you know there's theories around obviously since uh i mean as a recording of this it's it's middle of may i think it was a, uh i want to say it was in february when amazon increased their price uh their cost again but i think it was another five percent hike or something like yeah. that and obviously amazon's consistently increasing pricing obviously with inflation and everything so is everyone else but you know amazon and any marketplace really consistently becomes more and more expensive and you get a lot of sellers that are doing everything they can to kind of diversify and things like that and i know that uh you know we had spoke earlier it's a 90 percent of your business is through amazon 10 percent you're still doing private label elsewhere yeah. but are, what's your thoughts on where this is gonna go like what's what's gonna happen if you start getting priced out of amazon yeah so uh, my uh, my honest opinion this is a great question andrew i love i love these thought-provoking questions so my honest opinion is what we do as a business with amazon wholesale the whole bundling of items kidding items creating multi-packs and variety packs amazon doesn't want to get their hands in that and i don't think they'll ever want to get their hands in that it's just too laborious for them so it opens yeah. up an opportunity for people like me and you and other people listening to really do that for them so i don't think that's going anywhere but the shift i do see happening in the next two to five years is a lot more of these smaller niche brands that we're seeing pop up on Amazon. They're going to do one of two things. They're going to start selling the products themselves or they're gonna partner with reputable third-party sellers like myself and some of these other bigger guys and girls out there and have them manage the brand for them opposed to having seven to 10 sellers just fight to the bottom. Yeah, are you referring to uh basically a third party company managing it for them or are you referring more to like some of these aggregators like thrasio and all those guys out there that are just gobbling up everyone that they can find no the first option just a third party seller managing everything for them so someone who still wants to own their business they're not ready to sell you know a lot of people come to us they look for us to sell their products because they went to walmart or they went to kroger and kroger said hey you don't have any Amazon sales. I can't put your product on my shelf until you prove that you're selling, you know, a couple thousand units a month on Amazon. Because if you're not doing that, the customers don't want it. You know, yeah. so a lot of companies are like, okay, I need a third party seller 
to at least do what I can't do because I don't understand how to do it, sell these products, advertise for them, fulfill them, deal with customer returns, and just deal with the whole you know, orchestrated process that needs to happen mm-hmm. to get the products to, to the end consumer. In these cases, uh, when you're primarily wholesaling, you do you own the listing? Uh, we do not own the listing. We we do create listings that we own. It's called wholesale bundling. There's definitely a method to do that. But 90% of our SKUs are SKUs that we do not own the listing for. And so it's it's more or less the race to the bottom to own the buy box, correct? Yeah. So what happens if... I mean, I understand, you know, we spoke earlier about you kind of leverage these pre-existing brand names and there's natural search volume for those regardless. But what do you do when you come across, let's say, you know, your your traditional listing optimization issues of their titles, garbage, bullet points are like horribly done if they're there. There's one picture like they're not, you know, there, there's kind of two different uh, approaches that I've always seen on Amazon, which is the you know, pump out a ton of volume and hop in a buy box and and make your money and get in. Then you have like the brand building side where you got to put a lot of work into design and developing a storefront and all that stuff. So it's, you know, it's kind of two different worlds. But what happens when you come across a listing that's just kind of beat and you're like, I I got the product, but I just can't get them to optimize this the way it should be. Yeah. So the, the first the first step would definitely be attempting to edit it yourself. Sometimes a lot of these listings, they're not connected to any owner because they were created so long ago. So you can go in and update pictures and bullet points. But if that's not the case and I see a phenomenal product that has potential, but the listing is trash, I'll reach out to the brand and let them know like, hey, Listen, let's partner up. You know, I can I can create your brand registry. I'll create your storefront. I'll create enhanced brand content. I'll even throw ads at it for the first two or three months to prove myself. And then once the, the business is growing, I'd like to put that ad spend on you and you just continue to provide me with the best pricing and I'll take care of everything else. How often does that either get accepted or denied? Yeah, so accepted, I would say probably 20% of the people we reach out to are actually open to doing that. Um, The other 80%, they're not open today, but that doesn't mean a no today is an indefinite no. It just means no today. I'll I'll reach back out in 30 days, 90 days, 180 days and keep following up with them. Yeah. What about other marketplaces? Have you ventured into trying out Walmart and eBay or Wayfair, depending on whatever it is you got? Yeah, we've done a lot of Walmart, a lot of eBay. Um, you know, I've done some Facebook Marketplace and Offer Up. Uh, I just found we, we essentially we cut out all that other stuff because for right now, for our business, the past two years and continuing, FBA wholesale for us has been so lucratively p- profitable that we don't want to allocate any of our time anywhere else. Yeah. So you're solely on Amazon. You don't have any other aspects off the platform right now no just amazon interesting and is there any so you do have uh your own private label correct yes. yeah we have about six different private label brands so have you ever considered going into the aggregator business and you know because there's countless of them now I, yeah. I can think of how many there are but like, have you thought about now that you're private labeling more, starting to look into these other brands that are private labeling, doing decent on Amazon, starting to acquire them? Uh, you know what? It's something I haven't considered really just due to time. Uh, but absolutely, that's not out of the question. It's definitely something we would get into in the future, 100%. You know, What's it, your theory on those aggregators? Uh, some I think people love them, some hate them. Yeah, listen, I don't really have an opinion on them. I think they're doing what they need to do. Like people want to sell their brands and there's people who want to buy them. So they're making it happen. You know, they're getting the money together and they're making it happen. So I think it's great, especially for a regular Joe or or Stacy who literally built a private label company out of their basement and sells it for seven figures two years later. It's like so amazing that that can happen. So I love that aspect of it. Um, and also, I just read an article that Scott Needham shared, or maybe Derek DeMayo, one of them shared, uh, but like the aggregator space has like dropped 60% or 70% just in the past couple months, which is mind blowing to me. Yeah. As of uh, what's today's Thursday, I think it was last week. Um, actually, no, I know it was last week. I think it was last Tuesday. Thrasio uh, ended up 
cutting, I think it was like 25% of their staff. Yeah. Uh, there was a, I saw a bunch of people on LinkedIn and all that fun stuff of like, you know, people trying to help them out and find new jobs. So all of a sudden the e-commerce market just got slammed with a ton yeah. of people that are, I assume are amazing at what they do. And so they're up for, up for grabs right now. Yeah. Um, what's, what's your thoughts on, you know, e-commerce has been, I don't know the number off the top of my head. I should have it open, but it, it, the actual growth of it has slowed down. I mean, my theory is obviously post COVID we're not, yeah. you know, it's not what it was. We obviously sped things up really fast, but do you first see e-commerce to, uh, continue to slow down or you think it's going to kind of pick back up and start to grow again? No, it's definitely going to continue to pick back up and grow again. You know, just watching the trends over the past 10 years being in the industry, like it's had slow points where it goes down for a couple months, but always at the end of the year, the the data represents that it's increasing. Just more people are shopping online out of convenience, mostly because it's super convenient to shop online. And then it's just super easy, you know? Yeah. What are you, so, uh, you know, with Amazon lit, you mentioned you have everyone that, that gets to join in on these, um, different coaching calls and things like that. I imagine you correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of the questions right now are on supply chain issues yeah. and inflation and Amazon pricing increasing. And like right now it does kind of feel like the world is caving in on a lot of people there. Everyone's in that initial panic as you know, the market st starts to take a turn. What are you advising people to do during this time? Yeah, so for for wholesale specific businesses, I'm advising them to reach out to more vendors and suppliers. The best way to combat supply chain issues is to diversify the opportunities that you're able to purchase products from. You know, so instead of having access to 10 vendors, if you make it 50 vendors, the chances of you running out of products become much lower. So I encourage people to not only reach out through email and phone calls, but also go to trade shows. There's trade shows all over the country, Fancy Food Show in Manhattan next week, um, Sweets and Snacks in Chicago, Expo East, Expo West, ASD. There's so many trade shows where you can go build relationships in person. So supply chain doesn't really affect us where we are, but I know for a lot of the newer guys and girls, it's affecting them greatly. Yeah. You mentioned earlier with, in. I guess to the, to the point of those trade shows, you uh, beauty, grocery, and um, there was a third. I'm sorry, what was the third? Um, it was health, personal care, beauty, grocery. Yeah, yeah. Those are yeah. So why why those categories? Um, I I just feel like their search volume on Amazon. Like when you look at ranks on Amazon and you analyze the rank for let's say baby or patio and outdoor versus grocery or health and beauty. The product in baby needs to be ranked much, much lower for it to get the same volume. Let's say a product in baby is ranked a thousand. The equivalent sales in grocery would be a product ranked 10,000. You know, so that means the catalogs in those in those categories are much larger and the SKUs that are ranked well are selling much faster. So it just creates a lot of opportunity to get high volume sales consistently on a wide variety of SKUs. And now that I think about it, based on every category you just said, it sounds to me like almost everything is a consumable. So you're pretty much getting repeat purchasers. Right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas in baby, sometimes you buy a stroller, you buy it once, you don't need it again. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Some of our non-consumable products are usually more expensive. You know, we sell a lot of like uh, pool heaters and we even sell like chicken coop doors, so, like crazy things that you'd never think of. But you're right. We might only sell 20 of those a month, you know, but a two pack of head and shoulder shampoo, we're selling 500 a month. So it's yeah. it, it weighs out evenly at the end of the day. What's your tech stack looking like? You, you, you got all these rankings set up. You You clearly have probably hammered out your top pieces of software that you usually suggest. So what uh what do you guys usually go for there? Yeah, yeah. So we actually, it's funny you talk about tech because we have five in-house web developers who are mm -hmm. always, you know, creating new programs and protocols and calls to all these different softwares. Because my experience is I, I use three softwares. I use Keepa, I use AZ Insight, and I use a UPC scraper like Scan Unlimited or our own Source Correct. Those three softwares are really all you need for Amazon Wholesale. But the issue is when you start to scale, you have issues with inventory management in your warehouse, you know? So it's like, how do you deal with that? There's no out of the box software to do that. 
So what we did was we hired web developers in-house to kind of build these systems for us and also to create processes where they can talk to each other because there's no out-of-the-box software that really helps wholesale sellers like us. Yeah. That sounds like that's probably your next business venture, am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. The next business venture will be scaling out SourceCorrect to you know a couple thousand u- users and then selling it because my honest opinion, not just because we created it, but it's the best UPC software in the, in the market, 100%. So what's your what's your end game with the business as a whole? Is it to eventually sell? Yeah, yeah, we would we would love to sell. You know, we got a pretty hefty offer um, right before COVID started, and I'm so grateful we didn't take it because immediately after COVID, our business tripled. So mm-hmm. it's like you know we could have got out then, uh, but we 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 were ready to, and it and it worked out perfectly. So yeah, the goal would be you know a couple years down the line, five six years down the line to to make a hefty exit. But right now I love it so much and, and we're making so such great money and it's helping, you know, our consulting business. We're building softwares around it. So an exit in the next couple of years, we're not making that happen. Yeah. You're still a young guy. You still got a lot of time to keep growing it too anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, so when you're, when you're, someone signs up Amazon lit, you kind of go through the whole coaching side. Do you usually ex- like talk to them about what their exit strategy is? Do you expect them to have one before they get started? What, what's your thought process behind that? No, you know what? Most people, when they're, most people who join our program or get started on selling on Amazon, they're not thinking about an exit strategy. They're just trying to make an extra $5,000 a month. Yeah. You know, and really when it comes to wholesale, it's completely different than private label. Private label, you could build the company to seven figures and someone might want to buy it for you from you. Mm-hmm. You know, but but wholesale, people aren't buying seven figure wholesale businesses. They're buying eight and nine figure wholesale businesses and they're looking more for the systems that were built and the connections that come with it. You know, they're not just looking to take over your company without having the proper technique to manage it and also the relationships to continue to grow. It's a very interesting point. I never thought of it that way. It's, yeah. That does make a lot of sense because, you know, we I, I talk with private label sellers all the time and yeah. you, you have a bunch of different ones. You have the ones that kind of like are really focused off Amazon and have Amazon as kind of a secondary. Then you have the other side of things where you have the people that are so hell bent on Amazon and they spend day in and day out tweaking a little word here and there expecting it to make some big difference and then yep. they get upset when it doesn't like the little black hat guys that'll run ads and but they'll change the search uh, url just to kind of change or they'll, they'll start incorporating many chat because it's great yeah. and then you used to have the review guys and it's all a nightmare with that but i guess with wholesale really the breadwinner there is focusing on good product that you know just has the volume on amazon that you can get involved in am i right yeah yeah and also, and, and the last thing would be building out your processes within your warehouse. You know, right now below me, I have 45 employees and it's like an orchestra, like everything just runs to a T every single day. So like if someone's going to buy my company, they're buying that, you know, because they don't have to build it. It exists already. Yeah. So really, you could almost say that from a wholesale perspective that you really have to be a operational genius because the marketing is kind of already done because you're leveraging these pre-existing brands brand awareness so as long as you can operate at that kind of scale with that kind of volume that's really all it takes to i don't want to say that's that really belittles it but i mean like (laughs) that's that's basically what it takes to be successful on a wholesale side right yeah absolutely it's all about the operational tactics and standpoint because if you don't have that then it's very confusing in your business and, and the business that don't have that are losing a lot of money you know at scale you could be talking tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just by inefficiencies in your workplace yeah Pros and cons of wholesale versus going private label. Um, so private label cons would be right now shipping is crazy expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to get a private label product off the ground, figure from inception to first sale, it could be up to six months. You know, by the time everything's active, the listing, the the test order, all that. Some pros for private label, you can exit it. You know, you don't have to build it to eight figures to make a pretty hefty exit. Um, 
also a, another con is just all the black hat tactics you know i don't know if you know derek de mayo but he's a good friend of mine and he made a massive exit and and he's just we talk all the time and he's like eric i don't think i want to get back into the private label space because these these chinese competitors are really just doing everything to kill me right now oh yeah you know and it's it's scary it's a scary place to get involved but there's a lot of upside because i know dozens of people who've made healthy six and seven figure exits from building private label products so i think that's the upside the downside is just the time it takes to do it and then a lot of times by the time the product gets here you know some other competitor came in and just is crushing it and now you're screwed yeah um pros and cons for wholesale the pro you can literally start selling products tomorrow um, so it's very easy to get started. You can start getting your first disbursement check in a couple weeks. Um, all the products are sourced domestically. A con would be there's competition. So if you're not doing your product research properly or you don't have the proper relationship set up, you would be essentially doing a lot of work for a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. You know? Interesting. So I imagine a lot of this stuff is is basically things that you teach within Amazon Lit, am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So I sign up for Amazon Lit. Walk me through what that whole process is like. How how do I get how do I get started? What's some of the the tricks like what what is the benefit of signing up for this program? Yeah. So, first of all, nobody gets into the program without having a conversation with me first. The reason why is I'm like the gatekeeper to the community. I don't want anybody in the community who's just trying to buy a course to steal information or to bring down the community. Morale is super important. So I jump on a phone call, make sure you're a good fit, you're a good fit, you're locked in. The first step would be watching the course content, right? Thoroughly, it's designed to be interactive. So it's not like a, it's not like a movie where you watch the whole thing and then you take action. It's like, no, you watch this module and you do what we tell you to do and then you move on to the next one when that step is complete. And we essentially guarantee if the people in the program do that, their business will grow four to five X in the next 12 months without a doubt, it's proven, right? Secondly would be they show up to the Monday calls and they participate. You know, we find the people who participate, ask questions, answer questions, they see the most growth. And the last thing would be communicating in the private channels, helping other people, not only asking for help when you need it, but also providing help when someone else needs it. So we create this atmosphere of growth and a community where we got about 650 people in there and they're all helping each other. We're helping them. It's pretty amazing. Nice. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. What um, do you have any, I imagine these may not be public, but like, do you have any statistics behind the people that have signed up the results they've seen in X amount of time, or do you have like just some kind of glory story that you always tell like this one guy did this and it was nuts. Like what's, what, what are some of the, the I guess the testimonials that you get from yeah. some of the sellers you work with? Yeah. So our success rate is very high. It, it's upwards of 98%. You know, we've had out of 600 people, we've maybe had two or three refunds. Like nobody, people, when they get in, they don't want to leave. Um, but the success story that you, you're referencing, I would say it's this gentleman, Ethan. Uh, Ethan, I had a conversation with him about 18 months ago. Um, he called me one night and he's like, hey, my dad wants to join this call because he was like 19 at the time. His dad, he was in college, so he didn't have any money. He was uh -oh. making a little money on Amazon. So, you know, Papa Ethan wanted to be there. We ended up talking for two hours. He joined the he joined the program and this guy just hustled it out. He grinded it out. You know, uh, 18 months later, as of about two or three months ago, he's now doing 13 million dollars a year on Amazon, which is oh, truly mind blowing. He joined our inner circle, which provides you know annual access to us, where we fly out to his facility. We were just in Maine a couple of weeks ago, helping him optimize it in person. So like it's people like that, right? That just keep moving up our value ladder. Like they watched a YouTube video, they joined our course, they joined our inner circle, and now their businesses are a thousand X from when we started. Like that's what gets me excited. And that's why I continue to help as many people as I do, because I love those stories, you know? And that's just one of dozens, if not hundreds that I have. That's pretty crazy. That's uh, <laughs> you say 18 months? Yeah, 18 months, huh. dude's an animal. That's insane. Oh uh, man, that's nuts. Eric, 
super appreciative for having you on the show. I don't want to take up any more time. I know you're super busy. You have like billions of businesses to help run, but I'd love to uh, to give you the opportunity to tell everyone where they can hear more about you and Amazon Lit, all that fun stuff, and we'll wrap it up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Instagram, Amazon underscore Lit. Check us out as well as YouTube. Um, and if you got any questions, just send me a DM. My messages are always open. I respond to them, so I'm more than happy to help. Andrew, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Look forward to doing this in the future. Appreciate your time.